Gung, gung. Hi everyone, meet the knee Pac Tano here, the internet's busiest <laughs> music nerd. And it's time for a review of this new Julia Holter album, Something in the Room She Moves. This is a brand new LP from singer, composer, producer, songwriter, Miss Julia Holter, who continues to expand her fantastical and wondrous discography with another studio album, dragging us deeper into the forest, pulling us higher into the clouds. If you've heard this woman's music before, your ears have touched the astral plane. Whether it's the overwhelming ecstasy or the nuanced and dreaming Loud City song, or the near perfect Have You In My Wilderness, each record from Julia has gotten more and more ambitious, which was also the case for her last full-length Aviary, a record that was equally dazzling and unruly with it sitting at 90 minutes in length. This thing just did not know when to quit, and I'm not necessarily saying that as a good thing, because yeah, for a musician of Julia's style, a 90-minute record is impressive and also a gift, but it was not not a very focused 90 minutes, I'll say that, but she has managed to cut things down quite a bit for this new full-length LP, while still challenging herself artistically uh, with a record whose title is very clearly a nod to the popular Beatles song of a similar title for some reason. However, Julia's intentions on a record, I tend not to overthink, as it does usually get in the way of the enchantment. Hey, Anthony! What? What's that a picture of? Um, it's, uh, looks fun. Okay, um, enchantment. Yes, uh, pretty much what Julia hits us with right from the start on this album. With the first track, Sun Girl, a song whose instrumental palette is almost beyond description, with detuned music box melodies, as well as woodwinds that sound like birds uh, chirping and tweeting, some airy keyboard chords, loose scattered bits of hand percussion, and these hulking, just massive groaning bass notes. The dynamic range this record is hitting us with right off the bat is incredible. And on top of all of this, Julia is singing these meditative, hypnotic refrains with this nearly expressionless inflection, where she sounds as if she is a figment of my imagination in a dream state calling out to me. I mean, dreams literally as a theme turn up in the lyrics. My dreams as I dream in gold and yellow. My dreams as I dream in gold and yellow. And let me say this track has quite a strange structure as well. I know on Aviary, uh, this is something Julia was experimenting with quite a bit. There were some songs that uh, I think going in a linear or winding or just more out there direction uh, didn't quite work. I think she is nailing it here as every change on this track is engaging, whether we're getting a noisy break, a groove switch. I think the song is just a show of how much Julia's talents have brought her to a place where she's just not constrained by typical song structure anymore, typical anything. And we hear the range of adventure that presents deeper into the track list. Whether you're talking about Me You, which is a kind of experimental avant-garde choral piece, which I'm not crazy about as the pacing on these kinds of compositions tends to kill me. However, if you are a big John Cage or Björk Medulla fan, I think you are going to get a lot out of this. There's also Ocean, which is an immersive instrumental piece where Julia blurs the line between drone and classical composition. And as long as I'm mentioning surprise highlights, let me also point out the song Spinning, which has these skipping looped grooves that uh, grab my attention instantly. And with all these progressive electronic synth layers laced into the mix, this is easily one of the most intricate and also most material compositions Julia's hit us with in a while. It's rare she comes through with a track that feels and sounds this direct, too. Which which is refreshing, not only because it's done well, but it displays a certain contrast in Julia's work, as I think much of the magic in it is in that it kind of lies just beyond clarity or objective interpretation. Just like the title of the album, it sounds vaguely like something that we know all too well, and yet it's not. It is not that thing. The aesthetics of it uh, just come across as an art piece or a sound.
sound or something that is painfully familiar, but uh, instead it's just a surreal revision or manipulation of that idea, of that feeling. Now, speaking of familiarity, though, uh, there are familiar moments on the record that feel like they uh, could have landed on at least a few previous Julia projects, but now she's kind of building on a lot of these sounds and ideas that we've known her for up until this point. The song These Morning, I think, is another example of this, where Julia is once again bringing together elements of dreamy ambient pop with the kinds of stark, jazzy embellishments you'd catch in the soundtrack to a film noir mystery. Meanwhile, Evening Mood is proof that Julia is just one of the best to do this art pop thing in the modern era, taking the otherworldly aesthetics you would catch on a Kate Bush album, for example, and bringing them to uh, conclusions that are just the definition of marvelous. The record also comes to a very interesting finish, too, as Julia's songs and compositions introduce a lot of dissonant instrumental passages, more fiery performances, more instrumental chaos. Talking to the whisper has an absolutely blazing horn solo across the bridge, uh, not to mention the free jazz finish on the track, too. Meanwhile, Who Brings Me is kind of like a, a calm after that storm, more of a somber ballad with a very, very, very dour chord progression, and a lot of eerie imagery coming off the lyrics, too. While I don't think this record contains the most cohesive track list Julia has done so far, with maybe the weakest point on the album being Materia, because this track, while it is pretty on on the surface uh, does feel kind of short and underdeveloped in comparison with every other track here, though I still took quite a bit away from uh, Julia's poetry on love on this track, which made for one of the most straightforward and lucid statements on the entire LP. But yeah, still I was just blown away by the beauty of this record, how immaculate it sounds, how immersive and challenging and daring it is while simultaneously uh, being pretty in a very accessible way. I see this project as not just a great record for Julia, but uh, just a fantastic record as far as what I've heard so far throughout the year, because Julia is just bringing a level of talent and artfulness and conceptuality that uh, you're not often hearing on a lot of records these days, which is why I'm feeling a strong A to a light nine on this one. Transition, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Julia Holter, uh, forever.